tropical tracks like Sinkhole, Marina, and Rumble Island! Bruh. In other news, when I made my Mod Nation Racers video, I wasn't expecting such an overwhelmingly positive response to it from a pretty decently sized cult following that loves this game. But it's for good reason, because Mod Nation Racers is an awesome, quirky, fun experience with a lot of character to it. Being able to vastly customize all of your character's tracks and carts so much offered so much replay value to it that you could play it for a long time. And unfortunately, time has been passing it. Online servers are no longer available, you can't do multi player with friends, and there's no way to share all of that fun content that you've created throughout the game's life. So with such a fun, compelling game being lost to time, it's no surprise that a lot of people are wanting a Mod Nation Racers experience to come to newer consoles. Whether that's a re-release, remaster of the original game, or bring on a whole new experience, I don't think coming back with a new Mod Nation Racers game is completely out of the question. I mean, on the PS5, we are getting a new Sackboy game, so I think it's totally reasonable to say that we could see a Mod Nation Racers 2 in the future. And in this video, Video, uh, 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 uh. And in this video, I want to share with you guys what I think would be a really great fit for a new Mod Nation Racers title. I don't usually do these type of videos, but it seemed like a good idea when it was suggested to me, and I thought it'd be fun. So without further ado, let's get into what I would like to see in a Mod Nation Racers 2. Scholars call it cheating, but I call it cutting work ethics. Peter North, no shortcomings. So this first one's going to be a little far-fetched, because in this current landscape of social media and sharing content, Content, it's just inevitable. But in a perfect world, I would like to see no punishment on creativity. And what I mean by that is most notably what we've seen Nintendo do with Dreams, a game that's pretty close to this in terms of creativity. Dreams is a game where you can create and share your own content. So people did these Mario fan games, as we know people usually do with a lot of Nintendo's IPs, and unfortunately they were sent a cease and desist. They've been forced to remove those titles. Now whether they've actually been removed or they're still in the game to this date, I don't know, but unfortunately when it comes to using someone's copyrighted content, aka Mario, in a fan-made project, you can imagine that can stifle and have an impact on people's creativity. It's like if you were in Mod Nation Racers 2 creating a Mercedes vehicle or something, and then Mercedes goes and takes that down that just took away all of the fun that you had putting into that. It's understandable that copyright holders would like to protect their IPs, but it doesn't change the fact that it is pretty disappointing when it comes down to stifling creativity. So, in a perfect world, would love to see limitless possibilities in Mod Nation Racers too. One of the things that immediately came to mind to me when I was trying to think up ideas for this video was keyboard and mouse support. Because this is something that already exists on consoles. You have keyboard and mouse support in games like Fortnite and games like Call of Duty. So you can physically do it, and with the upcoming new consoles, PS5 and the new Xbox, I feel that they should be even more open to this idea of using different peripherals. And I feel like it would help a lot when it comes to creative tools, whether it's carving out a new landscape terrain or copying and pasting objects across the track. More options is always better, and I feel like sometimes a keyboard and mouse is just better for those types of things. There's a reason 3D models and levels are generally created on a computer desktop and not with a controller. Not to say the controllers don't have their purpose, obviously using joysticks can give you finite movement that you can't get necessarily with keyboard buttons. The same can be said about a mouse, but I don't think more options can ever hurt, especially if it's somebody that's coming from a development platform wanting to experiment with a game like this. I think keyboard the mouse support would be pretty lit. Let's not forget that while creativity is a big part of Mod Nation Racers, not everybody wants to indulge in that part of the game. One thing I gave Mod Nation Racers a lot of credit for outside of having anything to do with creating your own content was that it actually offered a fun, quirky story. It was just a goofy, fun time with a lot of likable characters and some not so likable but still goofy enough to kinda like them characters, all wrapped up in this package of tournament style races with these two broadcasters like it was a NASCAR show. And in other news, Gary just graduated from pull-ups to big boy pants. It was always entertaining and it was always something that I felt Mario Kart was missing. With that being said, that leads into the multiplayer portion of the game because we need to have a solid multiplayer infrastructure. When Mod Nation Racers originally came out, social media and content sharing wasn't even as big as it is now. Think about how easy it is to broadcast and share gameplay. The Nintendo Switch offered a quick capture button which honestly I think was the best capture feature out of all of the consoles. And there's just been a big emphasis recently in streaming and everything else that goes on 
on when it comes to content sharing. Imagine how fun it would be if you were watching a streamer's content and there was just a link you could click to immediately download a track and jump right into it. And let's not forget about the capabilities of the SSDs that are going to be coming standard in the PlayStation 5. You should have no problem at all immediately loading into a game or downloading content and getting right into it. SSDs aren't a new thing, but they're new to consoles, and I think it would be really interesting to see what they were able to pull off with this new technology across the board on a level playing field. So whether you're creating content or not, I feel like there should be a way to effortlessly and easily enjoy everything that Mod Nation Racers 2 would have to offer in terms of content, whether that's on a campaign or whether that has to do with enjoying other people's creations. <laughs> This next one's kind of a given, but I feel like it deserved its own spot. I feel like Mod Nation Racers 2 would benefit a lot from not only some graphical enhancements, but new location variety along with some dynamic weather effects. Maybe you could have kart racing on the ice out in Antarctica or in other countries. Maybe at a moment's notice you could have the weather snap from bright and sunny to wet and rainy, which would immediately change the way you had to drive your kart. Think about racing games, but maybe not on the entire level of like a sim racer, but still kind of offer more of a challenge when it comes to how you have to prepare to drive in different weather conditions. Plus it could just give you a way to show off how far the game's progressed as far as graphics go compared to its older PS3 generation. <laughs> The last thing I talk about here could be one of the most important things we cover in this entire video pertaining to a Mod Nation Racers 2. In my first Mod Nation Racers video, we talked about how great the game was, how fun the gameplay was, how open the toolset was to offer vast customization possibilities, and how entertaining that story was. But if we had to pinpoint one of the biggest contributing factors as to why this game didn't do so well, it had to come down to its identity. Mario Kart is so successful not only because it's a great kart racing game, but because it had a strong identity backing it. You knew what all the characters were, you immediately knew the level of quality you were going to expect when you picked up a Mario Kart title. You knew what the level design would be based off of, and with how long Mario Kart's been around, you could expect a lot of the same gameplay elements to appear in each recurring title. But in Mod Nation Racers, all of this was fresh, and there was no real identity to tie it to. The whole game's identity was based around you building it, which was awesome, as far as the gameplay standpoint goes, but as far as drawing random people off the street in, especially considering that I don't think social media was quite as big as it is today, people just generally didn't know exactly what to expect from a game like this. And in a lot of ways, that's usually okay with the new IP, but it's also kind of dangerous. So how could they fix this in Mod Nation Racers 2? Well, I think it could easily go a couple of ways. First off, allow guest appearances from third-party characters, kind of like Smash does. Use some well-known PlayStation oriented mascots, maybe like Crash, Spyro. You could even have characters like Solid Snake make an appearance. Nathan Drake, Joel and Ellie. Okay, those two are a little far-fetched, but still, you get the point. And while adding these new characters, you could also add new customization elements. Maybe introduce new levels or micro stories with these characters, and then after you complete those, you can actually take those customization elements that come with those new characters and put them into your own levels or your own cards. Maybe you could have new world locations that you could build custom tracks on based on the worlds from that game. It just seems like it could be an easy way to offer limitless DLC with each new character. Not only are you giving new players a reason to pick up this game and be a little more familiarized with it based on the characters that are offered in it, but if you wanted to add DLC further down the road to increase the game's longevity, you could easily create new content based on each character that you add into the game. And it doesn't take any genius to know if you're creating content, having a pre-established reference to go off of is an easy way to create some money. I believe if you take everything that I've mentioned in this video and top it off with building the game's identity, I think you have a recipe for success. I want to thank all of you guys for checking this video out. This is a new type of content for me, so let me know what you think of it, as well as thank you if you watched that original Mod Nation Racers video. While you're over here supporting the idea of a Mod Nation Racers 2, you can support my channel a little more by checking out some of my videos or even donating over to the Patreon. It's only a dollar, but I'm going to plug it here because YouTube's monetization future is a uh, questionable to say the least and my boy exceed has been doing it for a while so if you want to join him in the big t strip club of shamelessly throwing money at me there's your option baby but i hope you guys enjoyed honestly i really enjoyed making this type of video and hopefully i'll see you guys in the next one it's been big t <laughs> god i hate that name and i'm out And Mod Nation Racers, when it came out in 2010, was definitely something that was on my radar. However, I had my head so far up Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2's ass, 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 ass.
Hasta